Okay, click OK. And then... Oh, before we get started, uh, Kelly has uh, volunteered to lead a practice of this sword <clears throat> on some other day. What day would that be, Kelly? It would be Mondays at 9. And it, oh, sorry, Mondays at 7. PM. Oh, 7 PM? 7 PM. Yeah, from 7 to 7.30. And it wouldn't really be me. Well, I mean, it, it would just be a, a practice where we can just get together and kind of stumble through it together just so we can get our eyes on it more than once a week and also to get me to practice. So, <laughs> so if anybody wants to join me, I mean, it's, yeah. Okay. I, I can't make it every Monday, but most men Mondays I can. Okay. Yeah, send out an email. Okay, we'll 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 create the class and see what happens. Yeah. So yeah, yeah we'll create it and send it to everybody. Okay. Thank you. All right, great. Our our first evening class. Yeah, back to <laughs> evenings. All right. <laughs> okay. Prepare. Opening. Three rings around the moon. One. Two. Three. Big Dipper. Swallow spins the water. Block and sweep. Right. Left. Is that how far we went? Little dipper, I think. Little dipper. I think you did the turn. And then, yeah, the turn that we've been practicing it. Just turn and stand up. And the figure eight for your arms. Okay. All right. I'm sorry for you, Mom. Prepare. Opening. Three rings around the moon. One. Two, three, Big Dipper, Swallow skims the water, Block and Sweep, to the right, to the left, Little Dipper, Turn and stand up. Yeah. Okay, I do that. Okay. So one more time. <clears throat> Prepare. Opening. Three rings that were on the boom. One. Two. Three. Big Dipper. Swallow skims the water. Lock and sweep, to the right, to the left, Little Dipper, and uh, Swallow Returns to Nest, is it? The beginning of Swallow Returns to Nest. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see you do it. We'll watch you do it. I can't do the turn. Okay. Wait. 
Oh, wh who, who are you going to point it at? Oh, okay. We'll watch Kelly. Uh -huh. Prepare. Opening. Three rings around the moon. One, like a knee brush. Two, like a parent close up. Three, grab the sword. Big Dipper. Swallow skims the water. Block and sweep to the right, to the left. Little Dipper. And Swallow returns to nest. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right, good. All right, so anybody have, you have any trouble with anything? I, I know the... Uh, I have trouble with the uh, footwork on the Big Dipper. Uh, oh, okay. So I know I'm uh, cheating somehow. I, it's like I don't have all, enough of the little pieces. Well, you, want, you want to show everybody? Well, it's because I don't know. It's because I know I'm skipping something. I just don't know which I'm skipping. Okay. So uh, no. where, is, where is that from? That's from after you take the sword. To the left. Block and sweep to the left. Left. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then you come up. Yeah. Step out. And then I don't know. Is, are there two steps here? No. Okay. You need or to stay no. on your left foot, and then you step out with your right foot. So I'll show it to you then. So from here, big circle, point your body to the uh, corner, and then step out with your right foot. So bring your right foot in and step out, right? So you're changing feet. Okay. That's what you're doing. You want to try it? Okay. Okay. So, so I'm here, and then I step out with my here. Yes. You got to make a big circle first, though. Yeah. So, so, so here. Yeah, big circle, and step out. Yeah. No. And then st another step. No. no step out. Empty stance. And then another. Empty stance. All right. So, so, empty stance. Empty stance. Okay. Oh, that, empty stance. Okay. That's the part we're going to review today. We're going to review it anyway. So. I, go ahead. Okay. So your... I'm missing two steps somehow. <laughs> All right. We're going to review it anyway. We're I know gonna... there are four steps, and then I'm I'm I only have two. Uh, this three steps, I think. All right, so from here, I'll show it. I'll show it like this. Big circle. Bring your foot in. That's one. Two, comes down, step. Step towards the corner. Toe points straight. Then shift under the right foot and, shift, and circle down. And then step out and cut up. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, that's better. What is it? Two steps. One, two. two steps. Yes, but um, can you explain where the right foot steps? You step towards the corner yes. with your toe open to the straight. Okay, but... Okay, so... We'll do it again. In, in relation to the left foot, where does the right foot step? To Watch the corner. Rita. See, her footwork is not right. So. And you have to open so your toe. Here. Yeah. Yes, but you should get ahead of your that's left good. foot. No, that's it. That's okay. Go on. Wait. So, okay, so if I'm here and I come here, okay, then I'm stepping here? Yes, towards the corner. Yes. I'm toward the corner, but my toe is that way. Yes. Yes. Then I come up. Empty stance. Yes. That, then that's only two steps. 
That's right, two steps, not four steps. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, all right, so that's that's review. I'll do it. Uh, this I'll do it this direction. Uh, this direction uh, from here. I just want to make it clear. Nancy was making it clear. From my heel to the corner is the line I'm going to step along. I don't want to cross that line, but I want to be like two one line two sides. So you make a big circle and then you step here, okay, towards the corner with your toe open to the straight. Okay. Okay. All right, so uh, again, just uh, again, so for a big circle, and when you go up, uh, you're like this. Your body's already basically pointing the corner. So down and make a big circle. Keep your body pointed at the corner. When you step, you start to turn to the right and step. All right, your body starts to turn. Then you circle down and up, and just as you, just before you finish cutting up, you touch the floor and finish cutting up. And here you need to you need to worry about the tassel uh, wrapping around. So remember we talked about last week that when you cut up, we'll do this direction. When you cut up, you can maybe go you can go like this and make the tassel follow you around. But then at this point, you need to kind of slow down and lift. But don't let the tassel, you know, you have to control the tassel at that point. So on the way, make it a big circle, like a whole circle from, from here, a whole circle that you can let the tassel do what it wants. And then the last part, which is the, what you're, uh, the attacking part is this cutting up. Then you need to bring it up more slowly. Okay. So it doesn't, the tassel isn't flying around. Okay. Otherwise it'll wrap around you and then it'll, you'll have to put it back. All right. So, or it'll constrain you. A little hint that Master Yong has is that as you bring the sword up to slash up, to bend your, keep your right elbow bent slightly. Don't extend it too yeah. much. Because then the tassel can then bump off of your elbow and not swing around it. Right. So too, too straight, that's a reason not to be too straight. Because too straight, it can still, look, it can still easily got to go around your arm. So if your arm... Should never be too straight anyway, but if it's if it's got a little little bend in it, then that will help to control the tassel. Okay, so there's a, a few part points in the form where your uh, where the tassel does the wrong thing, and you can fix it just by a better like body shape basically or understanding more of the circle. I'll, I'll just tell you one other one just for fun. We have something. Let's see how do you, where do you get there? Uh, it looks like this, and uh, we chop we chop like this. Okay, to the side, and uh, into a bow stance, and it comes from here with our arms crossed. Basically, we do it a couple times in the form, but you don't want to do this. You don't want to go up and down because that makes the, the tassel fly and it ends up uh, it ends up in your way. So what it really is is kind of like the saber. We just did the saber where you do this one. It's to the side and chop. Then the tassel doesn't fly. Okay, it, the energy isn't up and down and making a half of a circle. It's more to the side and and then chop. Okay, so that's the right energy and the tassel won't fly and cross your uh, wrist. Okay, anyway. Uh, let me see, do it again. Prepare. Oh, all right, ready? Opening. Three rings around the moon. Two. Three, right? And Big Dipper. Swallow skims of water. Lock and sweep. Mm. Right. Left. Little Dipper. We'll just go to Little Dipper. 
Okay. Uh, let me let me see you guys do from here. You don't have to take the uh, the the tassel from here. The big dipper again. Remember, it's like this. One toe in. Turn on your toe, left toe. But turn your left toe in. On, turn your heel. Two half step. Three circle back. Bring your toe in. Four stand up. Remember to have the four steps in your footwork. All right. Let me see you, Kelly. No. When our when our sword fingers come across, do they come straight across, or is there a slight arc to them? Uh, well, they're down, so I think they just basically go straight out. Yeah. So it, otherwise, it'd be making a circle. So it's more just straight out. Thank you. Okay. All right. So uh, take it from getting ready to take this. Uh, the third after, ring. The, after the third ring. Left foot forward. Left bow stance. Right. Okay. One. Shift back a little. Take the save uh, the sword and shift back and turn your toe in. Still wait on the back more. Two. Half. Half step. Three. Circle back and bring your toe in. Then four. Stand up and point out. Okay. Okay, do it again. On your own, do it a few times. I won't call it, you just do it. Okay. Okay. Miranda, if you can do this with your uh, sword from here and just from here, keep your arm, swing it, just swing it up. Keep it, yeah, there, that's better. So see if you can just keep it straight, you know, straight, tight, straight. Don't bend it and then, and then, okay, so don't bend it. Just swing the whole thing up, point it forward. It's too far forward. Let's see. Rita, your half step is a little bit too close. Kelly, can you do the first ring, uh, the um, uh, the first left knee brush? The first ring. Yeah. Yep. Okay, good. That's better. Yeah, make sure you you are going towards the corner, not just to the side. Just like a regular knee brush. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Dee Dee, when you stand up for um, Big Dipper, uh, make sure um, your arm, your right arm, is not too far forward. It should be, if you lower your arm, it'll go straight to your leg. So, yeah, have it more... Um, uh no not that one big big dipper yeah that one uh so so if yeah so don't have your right arm go too far forward make sure it's yep yeah, yeah and straight yeah there that's it feels good. it feels like straight up so if you lower your right arm if you lower it straight down it should go along your side so if you just let it dangle on around your side and then just lift it straight up, that's the position you should be in. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, all right. Um, all right, let's see you do the, yeah, the, the, the little dipper from this, from this uh, block and sweep. Unless you, anybody has any questions about block and sweep. Look, from, from the, the second block and sweep, then, oh, you do? All right. I do have a question about block and sweep. All right. Um, it's when we're in the the, po the final posture of the swallow goes over the water. Yes. And I feel like my move my sword awkwardly to get back to the first back position. I'm not sure what I what it should look like. OK. Uh, I'll, sh I'll, sh I'll show you. And Nancy, maybe highlight 
spotlight me in case you don't want to jump around if you oh we had this you know we're having a discussion of whether this the spotlight can move around as people are showing things and so uh everybody is basically uh is it on me okay Every, everybody is uh may, may, if, if, if you can see yourself on the screen big then you're also going to be on the recording so it it should be fine for everyone if it's not it, it should be okay so anyway I, i'll show it this way uh So it's after the swallow. Okay. Here. I just go forward and drop it. Basically, go forward and drop the sword to level and bring it back and step. If you go back at a little at the same time, you can start going back. But basically, first is to drop it and then bring it back kind of level and step. Don't bring it back in too big of a like like this, okay? So basically down and back. All right. Okay, thank you. That's exactly what I was doing wrong. Oh, you, okay. I didn't notice, I'm sorry. I should have, should have seen it. All right, so, uh, yeah, so you know what? Since we're just at the beginning, maybe we'll review, we'll, review um, we'll, we'll go on. So we were looking at the Big Dipper and then Swallow skims the water and uh, and we'll see how everybody's doing and we can block and sweep and then we'll do the uh, the new one so from here uh first is chop and then tip up then sit and step and drop the tip back good and then and this that's when you start your circling so start circle down and then go into your bow stance and oh from open close okay to the corner Okay, let's do it again. <clears throat> One is chop to the corner, back corner, and your left hand comes with it. Then tip up, then step, and tip goes down. And then from the open to close, and a little chop at the end. Okay. And at the end, at the end, you're, uh, it's like white crane, basically, for your left hand. And then you're, uh, but it's also in front of you. Your center line, your center line, I'll point at the camera. Here's what, here's the center line, my center line, instead of being in the corner. Okay. And my arm is, uh, my, my sword is parallel to that center line. And my left hand is crossing the center line. Okay. So make sure that when you do the, this, uh, uh, ward off that you're going along your center line that's where somebody would be trying to hit you or poke you with something that's where you need to protect and come up other styles they do other things like they go off to the side and then bring it up that doesn't that's not going to protect you from anything so we want to do this ward off okay straight towards the corner okay that's the corner direction for us okay so let me see you do it from here from Big Dipper okay one is chop and then tip up, good. Then two is sit and step and drop the tip and start circling. And three is lead the sword to the corner from open to close and ward off, good. Uh, Alan, your, your hand should be higher. So like, like this shape, like this, okay? Yours is only like shoulder height and then I think your tip is up. It needs to be more of a straight line and there. Uh, uh, it should be high, your face height, your your hand, and then tip. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's better. Okay. Yes. So your your arm here is straight. Here will be straight, right? The whole thing has to be tilted up. Okay. Not just not just the the, the sword. Okay. So your arm up too. Okay. All right. Do it again. On your own, do it a few times. From from where? From Big Dipper. So I'll just give us the water. Uh, 
That's good, Chew. That's pretty good, Miranda. Kelly's good. Rita, is your, is your left hand high enough? Huh? At the end, yes. Is it high enough? It looks, I can't, from my angle, it looks like, it kind of looks like this. Oh, okay. Instead of like, okay. like, like that. But I might be not seeing it right. That's better. Okay. Okay, Alan, that's good. All right, so that's everybody. Everybody I can see. Okay. Um, okay. All right, so then uh, we'll go on. We'll do block and sweep. To the left and uh, to the right and left. So one is going forward, dropping this sword, and bring it back, turn it over, and step inside the corner, and then you know pull it across, slice across, looking o at the end, looking over the center, okay, of the sword. Then two, bring it, turn to the right, bring it to the right, bring it back, and roll it, roll it over, try not to hop in there, and step. And then the left hand goes first, and then close, from open to close, and look over the center of the sword at the end. Okay? Uh, again, I'll do it with you again. Okay? One, forward and bring the tip down, bring it back, and step. And then two, slice. Three, I mean, sorry, the next one. Turn right, bring the tip back, and step, then uh, left hand goes first and then closed. Let me see you do it. Do it on your own, I guess. When we bring it back, we're getting it in the right angle with our with our arm. Basically. On the right side especially. When you bring it back on the right, you need to bring it back a tip and open your hand. That's when you should open your hand. Okay? To hold it. Then just close your arm and keep your hand the same. If you bring it back and don't open your hand, you'll have like a 90 degree or more angle there and then maybe when you start pulling you know pulling it you maybe you're going to try to change it try to do that on the way back because there's some momentum there there's some momentum that lets you open your hand okay and then go back the other way and you can grab it to the to the right you can open your hand bring it back see so have some flexibility in your hand going to the to the right All right and then keep that shape keep the way you hold it and then just close it with your body turning Close it. Okay. The very um, end of the second one, how close yeah. is my left hand to my right hand? Is it? Uh, when? No, at the very end. At the end. Okay, I'll do. I'll show it this way. So from here, I'll show it this way. It's like a fist distance away, something like that. Okay, thanks. Um, so Rita, when you drop it, okay. So I want you to come down like this. Then I want the tip to come back, and I want you to turn to the left. Turn left some. And that means your arm should basically go to the straight direction about. And then have the tip keep going. Turn your hand over. Have the tip keep going and bring, pull it back and step. Okay? So you're, you're only bringing it down, basically, and turn your hand over and then going to the right. You're not bringing it back first. It needs to point back. I want you, okay, I want you guys to be careful about this. I want, I want it to look like this. Uh, I hope you can see from here. Down, and now, now watch my arm. My arm goes to the left, my hand turns over, the tip keeps going, my hand goes, to, my arm goes to the left and curves. Then I step, then I pull it across. 
right? Then to the right, see, I turn, my arm goes the straight direction, my tip comes out and turns over and goes back, okay? Then pull, okay? So my arm is opening, you know, 180 degrees. My arm's going from this direction to here and then to the straight direction at least, and then coming back over here. So I don't want you to do this. Come down and just here and then here and then, okay? Without the, without the arm and without the body. The body for this one, turn left, step, turn right. The body, turn right, step, turn left, okay? So the body first, really, and the arm's going with it, all right? So put your body in it, and that probably will make your arm do it, okay? <laughs> That's good, Rita. That's better, Rita. You know, in the in the weapons, I feel it feels to me like um, I think even the hand form we use our waist. But here we use our waist, it seems like more. Because what you're, you've got something heavy, it's relatively heavy. This is only like half as heavy as a real one, I think. Uh, but it takes extra work to move it around. And we want to use our body. When you use your body to do it, and t you're basically twisting, all right? T that's using your waist. Twisting your body this way is using your waist, okay? So we want that in there if we, um, if we don't have that in there, we're just trying to show. We just try to show it with the arms. That's that's. You wouldn't have any any power. The power comes because the second amount of power you have, the first comes from your legs. The second is from your waist, from the twisting. Okay, so we build up the twisting energy and ability to do that by swinging some little heavy thing around. You said Kelly. Like when you open to the, when we're opening to the right, yeah. am I trying to hold my shape here? Because I feel like when I, when my arm opens, I feel my shoulder opening. Should yeah, I, no, you need to turn. You need to turn right. I'm turning right. Turn right. Last part of it, do I want to kind of hold myself in body shape? Or does well, it well, you do, close? You, you do want to keep your body shape. All right, so I will say this. So from here, turn right and open and step. And here, I feel open, but I'm not like this. Right. I still have the body shape. Okay, thank you. And then turn back. Okay, so, right. Yeah, so that would be going too far. If you if you turn and then, op and then open like this, that's, that's, that's not good. Okay, so that's too much. So there is a too much. A too little and a too much. Okay. Okay. And then we did, uh, that's fine. We did the uh, little dipper already, right? You look at that one already. I think. Mike, do you want to just talk about the um, the left hand and how it feels to you when it swings out before? Just the timing of that, because um, I feel that my timing can be a little inconsistent, and I'm trying to get the feel for it. You're you're usually really good at explaining that. Uh, okay, so from here, for instance, we want to go like this to the right, then. To the left and step with stepping your hand circles down and then with closing it makes a little half a circle and then close then to the right then to the left okay so so, so is it is it fair to say that when you step you know how we go step close or whatever but we're step swing right when you step it 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 swings out as you shift your weight more it's circling and closing it's circling back can i just see it one more time 
it seemed like there was actually a micro coordination there on your left hand. Yes. Yeah. So, the, so you go to the right yes. and then step. Yes. It, swing, it, it swings down yes. forward with the step. And when you uh, shift, then it circles up and comes back. Perfect. Perfect. I just wanted to have that in my head. Thank you. How much is it, Nancy? Eight? Eight and a half. Oh, pretty good. We got eight inches. Eight and a half. <laughs> oh, you guys should come over here. <laughs> you don't have a sled. Do you have your own sled? Can you borrow? <laughs> actually, it actually looks like more, really. But it looks uh, like more? I just uh, barely went out on the stoop, so. <laughs> you didn't, oh, you didn't measure it over it? Okay, on the, you, I measured on, this, on the step. Yeah, on the step. All right. With the, with the I'll measure paper. later. It's still coming down here. Oh, maybe it's stopped. Yeah, no, no it's, it's still, still coming. coming. Yeah. It's still coming it's down. It's coming. Uh, Woo okay. All right, so uh, is that good for the review of everything, I think? All right. All right, so let's go on. Uh, we started last last time with the uh, the footwork. Chichen, you stay there. We started with the footwork uh, at, from Little Dipper of Swallow Returns to Nest. So what it is is first you pick up your toe, your left toe, and you turn, start turning, and you drop your right arm, and you point yourself in the corner, and you stand on one leg. That's the first part. Okay. Okay. Okay, so you're here. Well, uh, let, me ex let me explain it as we did last week. That's the first part, the turning. Then the second part is, I'll, I'll, I'll do it facing you. Or I'll face, maybe I'll face this corner. Then you sit and step out for a bow stance. That's the footwork, and you go in a bow stance. Okay? So from here, at the same time that you, st you uh, step, sit and step, circle your arms down by your hips. This direction, circle your arms. Okay? So they're by your hip. Your hand, uh, your right hand, needs to, as it turns this way, if I don't do anything, my, I, I, the way I'm holding it, the tip just gonna, it's gonna sort of fall. I'm just gonna be holding it with my thumb, really. Okay, and the tip's gonna fall. So what I wanna do at the end, I want, my, I want the tip to be up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, get closer. I'm going to, as I start to come down, I'm going to start to slide my thumb, slide my thumb down, on the handle, like the middle of the handle now, and then come around, and now I'm holding, it, pushing it into my fingers. See, I'm holding it, I'm holding it on my fingers, or this first part of my fingers. This, I don't know what you call it, phalange, is it? And then I got, how, I got two knuckle, three knuckles maybe, and three parts of my finger. Okay, so I'm pushing it against there. Not in my palm anymore, in my fingers, okay? So from here, make a curve, and slide your thumb down to keep it in your fingers and then it'll stay at least flat okay and tip tip up a little bit that's kind of the hard part what we want it to look like basically is this from here you just go like this and to the sides just go down and hold and like this a little bit palm up mainly palm up okay just at your hip okay so uh from here it looks like this just bring, open your left hand, your left hand, and and bring it down, both palms up, okay, and by your hip, just hanging down, okay. Then that's when you touch the ground. Can you put it back on? Andrew? Then we're going to thrust down, and the end of the thrust looks like this, okay, about a, about knee height. Maybe maybe about four, maybe this is 45, so it's a little higher, but knee height for the tip. And but the idea is that when you thrust, it's before you start thrusting, its tip is pointed up. Can you see it? Let me turn it this way. The tip is pointed up. Imagine something here, like a log or something. You need to go up over that log, and then thrust. Okay. You need to make a curve. Follow a curve. 
okay, like half a circle or something. So you stay like that. You stay, you don't go, you don't drop the tip and go straight there, and go under this thing. It needs to go up, over, and okay, make, make that curve. That's the uh, angle for the tip. So from here, like this, and for the left hand, they come together, you're really doing it with one hand, basically, thrusting with one hand, and at the end, it's going to be straight, all right, from your, in your center line. It's not going to be a point, it's going to be the tip in the center line, but the handle is also in the center line. You're going to go like this, into the knee, and the palm, the left palm is going to go under the right hand. Okay, you're grabbing it with the, with the right palm, palm up uh, for the left hand. Okay, so like this, thrust. Okay, here, back, forward, both stance, thrust. Here, thrust. Okay, so that's uh, swallow returns to nest. So the whole thing we do like this. Can you show? Can you show my head? Okay, sorry if I'm here. The whole thing we do like this. A uh, one. Here, my knee is bent. My right knee, knee is bent. Turn and stand up. Oops. Then two, go down. Touch with your left foot. Three, thrust. Okay. One, two, three. One. One. Pick up your toe and then turn and stand on one leg. Two. Sit and step. And bring your hands by your hips. Three, thrust. Okay? It's simple to describe the turning is hard, and actually holding it in your, in your hand like this is kind of hard. The thrusting is maybe not so hard, okay? So it's got a couple hard things in it though. Try it again <laughs> from here. <clears throat> One, Turn, two, sit, step, three, thrust to the knee. So that's thrusting into the knee, cutting, uh, poking into the knee. <clears throat> okay. So. The right foot. Mm. No. Okay, so Nancy wants to me to remind, remind you that when we turn around, try to point your toes straight. That makes your knee point to the corner. That's a good standing on one leg, okay? Then when you sit and step, your right foot still points to the straight, your left foot points to the corner. Okay, that's a good bow stance. Okay, so when you if you can, try to position your right foot when you turn. Do what you can do. And Mike, remind me, are, are are my my hand sword and my real sword um are are they are they uh parallel to the floor and ceiling or are they down or are they up when the tip points down. when i turn around the tip is a little down how far down is it oh no i, I would say it's, it's it's level it maybe is a tiny amount down okay. it's not up okay. but level is enough it could be down a little bit Okay. And your palms are basically palm, palm down, basically. Right, right. Okay, thanks. When you kick, they're not, they're more like this, right? Kicking is like this, palm out. These are more like palm down. Right. But it's, it's that kind of hand. I mean, it's that kind of arm. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's the same. It's just kind of turned, turned down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, so on your own... Uh, try it. I'll call it if you need me to. The, 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 the one is, is, is turning and you lead that with your body turning. Okay, don't, don't drop the sword yet. So one, I'll, I'll, let me explain again. One, I'll do this direction. One is pick up your toe and open turn this is using your waist turning your upper body okay open so i want you to have this feeling how do you turn open your 
you're standing on your heel, basically. Open, spin, okay? Open, spin. Put some, your arm is closed, open it with your body turning, use that momentum, spin around. That's okay. a good one, Kelly. That looked really good. That's better, Rita. Yeah. And then when you start to open, then let the handle let the handle come down and make the sword flat as you're opening, okay? But don't do it first. Don't go don't go first down and then do it, okay? This is just kind of as your as the left side is leading, then the right side just kind of flattens out, okay, and follows. Rita, start with your sword at a 45 degree angle downward. Your your sword is too high. Here? Yeah. And then have your left arm fingers point more towards your arm. So, yeah, a little closer. Okay. Yep. Nancy. Put this, put this thing on. Okay. Put this thing on. Come here, Gigi. Uh-oh. That's got in trouble. Come here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Miranda's pretty good. I think everybody's looking okay. When you, when you thrust, keep your head up. Head up, Rita. Head up. Uh, there you go. All right, so here, so just to be clear, when you spin around and you end up like this, okay, heads up, right? Then you sit in step. When you thrust, head up. Okay, don't, so your head okay. is not in line with your body. It's still lifted, okay? Maybe it's not pointed straight up. That's fine, but don't let it tilt. Don't let it make it be straight with your body. I know you said this, but how much tilt does your sword have? Uh, the tip is at the knee height. Your own knee height. When, but when, when you've. I mean here. You've come around like this, and then you come here. It's here's flat. It's up a little bit. It's up a little bit. Okay, that's. And, and then the first thing you go is feel thrusting up actually it feels up. up to down it to goes down yeah up first though okay up to down you know and you part of it i think i'm not I, i'm not positive i i don't read chinese and so i can't read things like this but but when we go to thrust with this we thrust always this direction like like this the thrust feels like this swing hold it in this in your hand this way and swing it it's one whole thing swinging the first part is just swing, okay? Swing, and then the tip drops, and your hands come together, okay? But it comes from be here, swing it forward, and then let the tip drop, basically, okay? If we wanted to poke somebody in the knee, and then we would point at their knee, then they would go, oh, they're pointing, then they would like knock it away or get their knee out of the way. So it's always pointed the same way before you thrust, almost always. We have one time that's different near the end, and we hold it like this, okay? And that's that's fair lady work shows. It is like this, and it's going down, okay? It ends up going down. But all the other times, all the other thrusts all start from here, and you can't, you don't know where they're going. They might come straight out. They might go down. They might go up, okay? They could go three different places, basically, okay? You always hold it the same way. They can't tell where it's going. They can't tell what you're thinking. That's great. Thank you. Would you please review your footwork relative to your handwork? After you've turned, you have one foot up. Yeah. So when does the thrust go relative to the footwork? You have to be on the ground first. So you're like this, then sit, okay, and step. That's two. Uh, be careful with my dog now. <laughs> three, three, thrust. Okay, both stands. So... They, when you sit, your hands go down too. Everything goes down. 
Then you go forward, your hand, your sword goes forward. Okay, so that's, it just goes with your body. So you spin around, it gets level, you go down, it goes down, you go forward, it goes forward. Okay. So you're here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's say I'm here. Okay. Was that an easy one? That's a pretty easy one then. If you practice the, the turning, you could practice the turning this last week. Well, let's look at the next one then. Nancy says we got enough time. Everybody, is everybody okay with it? With this one? All right. So this next one looks like this. This is called a uh, agile cat catches a mouse. It is Nancy. That's the name of it. So we're like this. I'll show it to you. One is back and open your toe. Okay, and tilt and and the sword tilts up. Two. Oh, I gotta do it myself first. And then you stand up on one leg. Then you sit and you you sit and touch with your heel. Then you make a little hop. And then you separate your hands and then you thrust. It's a little. It is a little complicated. Turned up. Watch out! Watch out, you. I'll do it from the side. Back and open your toe. Stand up. Then, uh, this is weird. Your foot comes down and it comes out, kind of a uh, kicking out your long coat you're wearing or something. Okay, so kick out your long coat first, then sit and touch with your heel. Then have a little hop. That's the pouncing part. It's agile cat pounces on a mouse. And then step out and separate your hands. Separate and step out for a bow stance, and then thrust. Now it's in line with your knee, but it's a similar thrust that we did, that we just learned how to do, okay? So, the let's look at the footwork. You can hold the sword or you can not. Uh, you go, I can't see it, everybody. You go back and open your toe, and then stand on one leg. Then kick out and down. This is not wide. This is just one line, two sides. Then a little hop. Okay. And step out for a bow stance. Bow stance. We have three of these in the form. This first one we call Agile Cat. It's got a little pounce in it. That's a little hop. The second one we call uh, a uh, wild horse uh, jumps a ravine. It's got a long jump in it. I don't like to do the long jumps because it's a uh, my knees are not good, but it can hurt. I don't want to, don't don't hurt yourself. All right. Uh, it's got a long jump, and at the very end, it's called fish jumps over the dragon gate, and it's got a high jump in it. Okay, so we got three basically almost the same at least for the jumping part and with just those, those three differences that makes them different we'll look at it again so from here you're in a bow stance back open your toe stand on one leg then sit step little hop and step out for bow stance bow stance okay all right the hard part is coordinating that with the the, the sword so the first thing I want you to do is back and open your toe. The tip is rising. When does the tip have to get all the way up? When you stand up, it should be 45 degree. And we hold it this, this way. We hold it in our fingers. Now it's more like in your knuckle, my, my, my knuckles. Not here. Can you see? More like in my knuckles. And my other hand is holding that same way, but it's touching my 
right hand fingers, but both thumbs are on the the handle. Okay, we call this uh, like well, if you're Asian, this is like holding incense. Okay, so if you you uh, for whatever reasons that you're holding incense, you hold it this way, and that's you hold it in your fingers. Okay, so um, and then you plant incense for people, or for whatever reasons. So here we hold it one hand like this, the other hand a similar way, but don't put your thumb over your thumb. Put it on the on the hand, and the and your arm is out like 45 degrees. Your arm is kind of look it round. If you're holding it like this, then just tilt it to be 45 degrees down, and that would be the right shape. Okay. If you held it out like this in a circle, and it was st standing straight up, and your arms were in a circle, just hold it, tilt, let it. Uh, drop down 45 degrees and that's the right uh, shape all right so from here we're like this palm uh, over palm back of your palm back and turn now start picking it up open your finger open your hand so it's on your fingers and turn both hands and hold it like incense and stand up all right good then keep holding it like that sit uh kick out sit then take a little hop when you hop you go forward let the tip let the tip start to drop when you go when you go this is like going down let the tip go down and the hand will go up when you jump up the handle goes up when you come down the handle comes down so if you hold it out like this still like holding it in your fingers Imagine it floating on water. Okay, it's floating here, but it's waves. And it's wa it's floating in the waves. The the handle goes down, the tip goes up. Imagine here's the center. The tip goes the handle goes up, the tip goes down. Okay? So floating. So when we when we go to jump, we jump up a little bit. We pick up the handle, the tip goes down. Then when we land, the tip the handle comes down, the tip goes up. So we have one up and down okay one up down the hop goes up we come down it comes down comes back okay here down basically okay i'm touching the ground with my right foot when i jump we don't we don't but you could i guess okay so so here a one little hop and one little up and down of the handle and the tip goes the opposite because it's floating all right so again hop then the handle comes to your hip your right hand goes your left hand goes stays forward it goes starts to go up and step out and you're holding it like we did before for thrusting and then thrust okay so after you do up and down one time they separate, make your sword fingers with your left hand, step out, thrust, finish coming up with the thrust. And at the end of your thrust, it'd be best if, here I'm holding in my fingers, when I finish my thrust, keep your thumb on it, get your palm underneath it, grab it. At the end, you want your palm to be flat with the sword, okay? So that means the sword is flat, your palm is palm up. Okay, don't try not to be holding it from the side now. Under, okay? So get under there. Get under and grab it. Okay. Nancy, can you put it back so I can see them? Okay. All right, so let's try let's try it. From here with your left foot forward. And palm palm to palm back and open your toe stand up and get it onto your fingers stand up then sit and step a little hop and make the handle go up and down one time then separate and step and thrust bow stance Try it again. Back, 
Open your toe. Stand up and hold it like incense. Kick. Step. Sit. Then little hop. Separate and step. Thrust. Okay. What do you think? That's a nice compliment. The first one was very easy, and then this is a little harder. So is the last thrust like the first thrust in the sense that it goes over something and goes yes. down? Yes, it has to do that. Okay. All right, all the thrusts, if they're going to go to the knee, I told you, except for this one, that you start like this, and it's aimed at it, all the other ones start here, and this one ends at the knee. They all have to go up and down. Okay, they all have to make that curve. Okay. Can I see it coming towards me? Okay. Back. Stand up. Hold, hold like a, like incense. Kick. Down. Little hop. Separate. Thrust. Great. Thank you. And at the end, I'll mention it again, it's straight out from your shoulder, okay, to, to, to knee height. It's not in your center line. Like when there's two hands, it's in your center line because you have two hands on it, all right? When only one hand, it's straight, okay? That was actually not, what I was checking. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Can you do it? <laughs> no. All right, let me call it then, all right? So from bow stance, left bow stance, back and open your toe so the tip starts going up and it's all the way up and you're holding it like incense when your knee comes up good then kick out step make a little hop separate and thrust good and when you thrust your body is, is by square okay uh, Rita, your left, uh, your left, oh wait, I'm doing it wrong. Uh, here, no, it's still, it's right foot forward. You're right, I'm, I'm doing wrong. Nothing, Rita, I was wrong. I was it's wrong. really hard to get that timing on the, yes. the hop to the separation to the up. Do you have any insights in how you get that timing? Well, here's the, okay. Uh, who it, does anybody have any knee knee problems? Like, is hopping gonna hurt you? Oh, here's a here's a tip for hopping. First of all, a tip for hopping. I'll do it this direction. Is you come here and you go like this. Make sure you land on the ball, and you want this to point to the corner. Okay, and then you step out. Then you have a bow stance. Okay, be careful. Don't jump and land on your heel, especially when you do the high one or the long one. Well, maybe for the long one is okay, because that's kind of your normal direction. But don't jump very high and then land right on your heel, because your foot is a natural shock absorber. All right? So land on the ball and take up some of the shock. Okay? Don't let it just go right into your knee, into your meniscus. All right? So I hurt myself a long time ago jumping wrong. Okay? So um, anyway, if you have bad knees and you don't want to even jump, you could do it like this here from here. Here, and then look, here, and then as you're stepping, step, basically step. So with stepping up and then shifting your weight back down, step, thrust, okay? So you can walk yourself through it, I'll show it again. Here, here, okay? That's basically walking through it. So instead of a real jump, so, what it looks like then, again, is here, I'll do it from here, as you go full, as you go forward and you're taking that step, handle up, and as you move your right foot, handle down, maybe to the middle, then with stepping out, separate. Thank you. Yeah, this one is a weird... Uh, it's just going to take a while to really get it into my body, right? We're, we're especially not used to jumping around, I think. So I think there's a lot of... It. 
It's hard to time the jump and time it. It's easier walking. Yeah. Right. So here, so here, this is the only this is the only time we're going to do this and then separate our hands and thrust with one arm. All the other times, I said there's three times. The other two times we're going to go up and down and they're going to separate this way and then we're going to thrust to they're going to come back together. So it, it feels really good and better, okay? Like this. If you like this here. Okay. So your whole body, everything, both hands going forward, okay? And even from here, your hands can come, they can swing back more, and you step out, and then you have more of a swinging feeling, okay? Here, so when you separate, try to have a little swinging feeling, swing and swing, okay? Swing, swing. But, but uh, when you have your whole body and both arms going like that, it feels a lot more natural, okay? So... <clears throat> If you want to play with it that way, I would I just say, then you could do you could do it like that and try it here, here, and then they both separate and they both come back together like the first one, and you can sort of see what that feels like. That's not how we do this one, but you maybe could get the timing because they all three have similar timing really, but this one on the way down, on basically on the way down. They need to separate and then and then okay and then one-handed thrust. Okay. Did you have something, Thank Kelly? You. Kelly. When the when the first uh, the first time we open, does the tip up, come up and then the knee comes up, or are we aiming to have them come up at the same time? I think it'd be best if they came up together okay. at the same time. Thank you. So they need to be at this point when you stand up. Okay, when you're up, then it should be, so, but it can be coming up, and it's be, I think that is better than here. Like, so for instance, I, if I did this, and then just did my, so here, back and turn, I think that's better. Do you have something to say, Nancy? Okay, so that's how I think it's better, but, you know, if you want to look at Master Young doing it, one of his demo, demonstrations, you could do it like that, but that's, uh, I think, I think it's like that. Okay, thank you. All right, let's, uh. Put these uh, last few moves together, okay? A couple times, a few times, and then uh, we're running over. It took a little longer than, than it, it should have. That's funny. Okay, so uh, we'll do it from uh, from from here, from from uh, block and sweep to the left. Left foot forward. Okay, little dipper, big circle, turn, step. Cut up. Uh, swallow returns to nest. Turn and stand on one leg. Oops. Then down and thrust. Two hands. Palm under palm. Then uh, agile cat catches the mouse. Back. Turn. Get it in in this posture, holding the incense. Then oops. then kick out. Step. Little hop and separate thrust. Okay. Again. Is this your is your head up or looking down at the end? No, your head's all has to stay up. Okay. All right. So here. Little dipper. Big circle. Step. Cut up. Uh, swallow returns to nest. Turn and thrust. Agile cat stands. Stand on one leg. Kick. Sit. Step. Hop and separate and thrust. Again. Little dipper. Ready? Little dipper. Big circle. Cut up. Turn. Stand up. Sit. Thrust. <laughs> Agile cat. Stand on one leg. Kick. Little hop. Separate. Thrust. All right, you guys do it. You do it on your own. We'll watch you. I think you watch.
And when you separate, it comes back to your hip. Okay? So don't separate to here. Pull down. Okay? And then thrust again. Okay. Hey, Didi's okay. Chelly looks okay. Read a square now. More square to this th corner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't don't turn too too much. You remember when we do it like this, remember? When we do it like this with two arms, you, your body's square the whole time. So here, separate, right. kind of square, stay square. Okay. Okay. You have a question, Chu? Yeah. Oh, all right. That is kind of Okay. All right. Well, I think we're doing pretty good. You have any questions on it? All right. So you might want to practice, uh, you know, without the maybe without the sword in your hand, and and practice the um, the uh, spin around. You're like this, then here, and then here. Oops. And then practice just a little hop and going into a pose stance. So. The, 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 the real way is without touching. I said you can touch if you have to. But from here is to go here and land and then just step through, okay, into a bow stance if you can, right? But so do it small till you can do a little more energy, get a little bigger. This is not a very big movement anyway. You're not jumping really far or really high anyway. But um, see if you can do it. If you have to, then it's still okay to, I say, to go and land and then step out, okay? Do what you have to. But uh, so play with that footwork. We still need to play with probably this, okay? And get that going. Okay, just turn and stand. Oops. See? Turn and stand only. It's hard, right? So I understand those things are hard, right? But uh, most of the form is not that way. Most of the form, you have two feet on the ground. And you're doing just moving the sword way around in different ways. Okay, so, but this has a couple of the weird footwork in it right now. Okay. Okay, you have any questions? We didn't get to practice enough. I, if, I would, if I were running this class more professionally, we should practice like 10 times. I'll let you do it yourself a few times. I did it with you like three times. We should do it, put it together, you know, with the previous uh, week's movements and do it like 10 times until we all feel at least we can remember it to be able to do it the next time. But you also have video to look at and, um, you know, so that will be helpful. Okay, so we'll let you go then. And thanks very much. Keep practicing. And don't get out, stuck out there in the snow somewhere, okay? Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.